All right, guys, thank you for coming. Welcome to Your Voice 2022 Lawrence Township Redistricting Forum. Um, Your Voice 2022 is an information and engagement campaign to bring awareness to the Indianapolis Marion County redistricting process. The goal of Your Voice is to hear from Indianapolis residents about their priorities for the mapping of future city county council districts. This is the early stages of the process and your voice here really matters. In these forums, we hope to engage communities to greater understand the communities of interest within each district to assist in the future mapping process. I hope you have taken the opportunity to review the information depicted in the space, um, on the space over here and on these easels. Um, this information is depicting the current district makeup. Additionally, I hope you all have engaged with the activity um, we have provided um, with information to better understand your communities here on the far east side. I would like to acknowledge the council members here today um, who were able to attend the forum tonight. Um, council President um, Bob Osley, um, Councilors Lakeisha Jackson and Ethan Evans, Dan Boots, and Lawrence Councilmember Deb Wiltfield. Thank you so much for attending. Um, we do now have a video that we would like to show you to further um, explain the Your Voice campaign. Thank you again for coming. Hello, I'm Macy Moore. In this video, I'll introduce you to Your Voice 2022, an information and engagement campaign to bring awareness to the Indianapolis Marion County redistricting process for 2022. The goal of Your Voice campaign is to hear from Indianapolis residents like you about your wants, needs, and vision for mapping future city county council districts. So you may be asking, what is redistricting and why does it matter? Redistricting is the process by which census data is used to redraw the lines and boundaries of electoral districts within the state. This process affects districts at all levels of government, from local school boards and city county councils to state legislatures and United States House of Representatives. The way that district lines are drawn puts voters together in groups. Through elections, these groups decide who will represent them at local, state, and national levels. The way a district lines are drawn is important. Ultimately, it can change who controls a governing body, change what policies get passed into law, and how resources are allocated. So how is city government in Indianapolis structured? Just as the United States government has the president and Congress, Indianapolis has a mayor who serves as the chief executive and council that serves as a legislative branch. All other Indiana counties have county councils and each city has its own local council. Indianapolis is unique in Indiana and in fact, in much of the country, because since 1969, the city and the county have been unified in many respects. We call it UniGov. There is a single legislative body for the city and county called the City County Council. The county continues to have several other officials who are separately elected, such as the prosecutor, clerk, recorder, assessor, and the treasurer. The Indianapolis City County Council initially had 29 members, 25 who were elected from geographic districts and four who were elected at large from across the county. The law changed a few years ago and now we have 25 councilors who are each elected from separate geographic districts. How are council districts set and do they change over time? The U.S. government conducts a census every 10 years. Once the numbers are in, a process is set in motion to review geographic districts from Congress to the state legislature to local councils around the state. State law requires those districts to be reviewed to account for the new population information. The census dictates how many seats in Congress each state will get, which is why states gain or lose seats in Congress every 10 years. State legislative leaders then work to ensure the state's congressional districts all have roughly the same number of residents to ensure equal representation. They also do the same for the districts of Indiana General Assembly, both the House and Senate. This process is called redistricting. Redistricting should accurately reflect population changes and meet statutory and other legal requirements. This process is used by lawmakers to equitably allocate representation in Congress, state, legislatures, and county and municipal councils. 
Each state has its own process in drawing district maps. By statute, the City County Council must redistrict Marion County Council districts before the end of the second year after a federal decennial census. This means the City County Council must review the districts and make any changes in 2022. State statute requires the City County Council to pass an ordinance that divides Marion County into 25 districts that, one, are compact, subject only to natural boundary lines, such as railroads, major highways, rivers, creeks, parks, and major industrial complexes. Two, contain as nearly as possible equal population, and three, do not cross precinct boundary lines. Precincts are the smallest geographic units in legislative districting. Several precincts are grouped together to make up a council district. The precinct boundaries must also be reviewed. The county executive, in the case of Marion County, the mayor, is charged with the task of re-precincting in conjunction with the new census. This is underway and must be completed before council redistricting can begin. How will the City County Council determine the new district boundaries? The current City County Council leadership team has decided to solicit broad public input on the council redistricting process. Accordingly, all City County Council members and all residents of Marion County have the opportunity to provide input into the redistricting process. Engaging Solutions is a local consulting firm that will facilitate public engagement in the redistricting process. So all communities of interest will have an opportunity to be heard. A community of interest is a group of people from a particular geographic area who have similar social and economic interests. For example, some residents may want to share how important a community center is and why it would be valuable to have its service area and the community it serves be inside one or two districts instead of being split up among many districts. How will the public have an opportunity to provide input in the redistricting process? There will be nine public forums where Marion County residents can have a voice in the redistricting process. Participants will be encouraged to share their perspective on the greatest strengths of their local community along with their thoughts about what makes their neighborhoods unique and what their hopes are for its future. Each form, location, date, and time is listed on the Your Voice 2022 website. If you cannot participate in a public forum, you are encouraged to provide your comments in the designated space on the website. In March 2022, after all forms are complete, a report will be published on the public input process. Maps will be introduced to the City County Council for review and consideration in the spring of 2022 and a final redistricting ordinance will be submitted to the City County Council for a vote at the conclusion of the redistricting process. Please plan to participate in a forum. This is an opportunity for your voice to be heard in the Marion County redistricting process. We look forward to seeing you at one of the forums. So as we move to the public comment portion of the meeting, um, we would like to remind the public of a few ground rules. In order for everyone to have a fair and a fair chance to speak and be heard, it's important that we observe the following rules. First, each, each speaker will be limited to two minutes. Second, any public comments must reasonably relate to redistricting, excuse me. Third, speakers who stray from the subject under consideration or become repetitive may be asked to move on to the next point or conclude their comments. Finally, attendees who cause disruptions that prevent tonight's meeting from proceeding in a reasonably efficient manner will be removed. Please remember that some types of threatening speech or incitement of violence aren't protected under the First Amendment. Uh, we deal with those issues as they come up, but we do not think that they will. We may now proceed to the public comment period. Would anyone like to come up to speak first? You may raise your hand or make your way to the podium. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marsha Alejos. I'm a citizen of Lawrence. 
I'm a citizen of Indianapolis. Uh, I'm also a candidate for Marion County Recorder. And uh, in all of those capacities, I just wanted to um, come and voice my uh, concerns about a couple of things about the process and uh, respectfully uh, to uh, President of the Council, uh, Osili, he has um, explained that he wants similar interest communities to be represented in the redistricting process. And I think that's great. And that uh, precincts also, as we were explained uh, in the video, need to be represented and they, they can't cross precincts. So uh, in that vein, something that concerns me is my understanding is that this meeting is the only one for Lawrence Township. Now, Lawrence Township's a big township. This is the southernmost tip of Lawrence Township. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be a meeting here. I think that's great. But I don't think it should be the only one for Lawrence Township. I really believe that given that Lawrence Township is a large township, and there's similar interest groups in the, the rest of Lawrence Township, and uh, that there's a lot of precincts that need not to be crossed in the township, that there should be additional meetings held. And I would like to see those meetings be done. Uh, I would like to see a lot of meetings be done to be able to touch on those communities of similar interest. Uh, I think that's a, a great point that um, um, Council President Osili made, and I think we should do that in light to allow as many citizens to have that opportunity. I also would like to see um, proposed maps be presented. My understanding is that um, right now this whole process is being conducted by paid consultants who are being paid a great deal of money. And I'm a little confused why our own representation cannot be conducting them. That's what I would like to see going forward. Is my time up? Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Barbara Tully and I am a uh, citizen of Lawrence Township for 20 years. Um, I'm also the president of Indiana Vote by Mail, which is a nonpartisan organization, but I'm not here representing Indiana Vote by Mail right now. I'm here representing myself as a citizen of Marion County um, and to support the idea of an independent redistricting commission. Um, I know that I read the article in the Star this morning, Mr. Rossley, that said, you know, it's, this, it's the obligation of the city county council to um, come up with redistricting maps according to state statute. But I would wonder if there is anything in, in statute that forbids the City County Council from es establishing an independent redistricting commission. Why can't the City County Council do that? I think input from a wide variety of the citizens is the best way to go. Um, and, and not people with a particular dog in a fight, Republican or Democrat or whatever. I just think it represents us all better. So I would suggest that the City County Council Yes, they, they have the responsibility, but I don't think there's anything in, in Indiana Code that would forbid the council from um, establishing an independent redistricting commission, and that's what I would like to see as a, as a resident of Marion County. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Jen Watts, and I grew up on the east side of Indianapolis, right down the street at 10th and Emerson. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a citizen, I'm also a small business owner. Um, I'm also what I think a rising leader of the new generation um, coming up the ranks in Indianapolis and Indiana. Um, and I think for this process to be transparent and independent and nonpartisan, I also support the idea of an independent redistricting commission. Um, many voting rights activists across the country are actually fighting for this right now to get citizens more engaged and to take the process out of politicians' hands and put it into the hands of, of the people. So um, I support that movement and hope that we um, here in Marion County can do it and that the city county council looks into that. Um, I also think that we should provide public mapping software to citizens here in Indianapolis. 
Um, citizens are very savvy now with, with technology. Um, I myself, I'm a senior millennial, I'm a digital native, and I want to be engaged in the process through new technologies and new platforms so that I can access to the mapping data as well and see if I can create a voting map for myself and for my community. Um, I also am working with Common Cause and was part of the movement that worked uh, for a statewide Indiana Citizens Redistricting Commission, Commission at the state level. It was extremely successful. Um, we ran a parallel process to the legislators, um, and, and I will say that if, if need be, we could run that process again. Um, so I, I hope that you'll listen to our concerns tonight, and I hope that you'll engage the public, and thank you for what you're already doing. It's already a step in the right direction. Hello, uh, my name's Nick Roberts. I'm probably the youngest person here like I usually am. Um, I've done a lot of redistricting work. I go to IEPUI, um, but I just wanna say thank you to the council for doing this. It should say a lot that we have nine of these meetings in Marion County, and obviously there's gonna be areas, you know, I'm a Lawrence Township resident. I had to drive 20 minutes to get here, but the reality is, you know, we're not gonna have 25 meetings in every neighborhood, and I think having nine in every township is a very appropriate way of doing it. Um, and that's as many as the entire uh, statewide tour that the statewide team did last year. So I think having nine for one county is totally appropriate and I appreciate all the work that's been done to make the, the graphics and put everything up because even, you know, this has, I've seen more things, more boards here, more, you know, engagement here than I did for the statewide, you know, team that they had doing their, uh, uh, maps and they had much 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 more money to spend and you know an entire statewide uh, party to work on it so I appreciate all the work that's been done for this and I you know I think it's a step in the right direction to get some more fair maps so thank you and, and particularly compared to last decade's maps which were atrocious so from the uh, transparency side so thank you everybody Well, thank you all for participating in the Your Voice 2022 Lawrence Township Redistricting Forum. Our meeting will be, um, our next meeting will be held in Franklin Township on Friday, January 28th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Similar to this meeting, we will have additional language services um, and we'll offer translation for Friday's meeting into Spanish and Punjabi. Um, for those of you who are unaware of today, um, Luna Translation was here and we were able to translate tonight's meeting into Haitian Creole and Spanish to accommodate our immigrant communities on the Far East Side. Again, I thank you for participating in tonight's forum. If for any reason you did not, you did not provide public comment and or think of another point you would like to make, please head over to our website, yourvoice2022.com, and provide additional comment in the comment box available on the website. Again, thank you for coming out. Give me one moment. Yeah. So if you did not get an opportunity to engage with some of the materials to the right of us, um, we um, welcome this time for you to engage with that or engage with that further. Um, and thank you again so much.